All right, here we are, spawning the upper left. In the red, representing Alpha X. He's a straight. And in the bottom right, in the blue for B100 Esports, it's Vanya. Now, Vanya going for one of the more stable aggressive builds. We have a 12 pool on the way here for him. And we should see, what, about 12, 10 to 12 Zerglings coming out, doing what they can to mess with the build of us right here. For may, maybe get a maybe get a building, but highly unlikely, generally the Zealous app. But more importantly, it forces there to be a full wall off in the natural here, which means the Nexus is four or 500 minerals delayed. It means you have to buy a couple of Zealots on top of that. So it just really messes with things because, well, if the Zerg gets through, the Zerg gets on top of the pylon. Zerg gets on top of this pylon right here. They do, the Protoss just dies. All right, there's, there's no production. Zerglings keep on streaming in. Vanya hits the Zergling printer button. And, well, that's, that's just how it goes. Now, Astrea is aware of this. He knows about the uh, he knows about the pool timing. He knows that how the hatchery is delayed. Uh, I'm surprised we didn't see maybe a pylon go down to try to block that, but. Exactly. Uh, yes, I, I, would, I would like to see a stray Max Packs, but Max Packs Vanya is also fun. Uh, of course, Max Packs really, really just took the cannons to him uh, on Sunday. So maybe there's they're going to see some uh, some changes there. But now the full wall is there. There's a the Zealot. Second one is about halfway done. And now we just have the dance of the Zerglings. They're going to try to do what they can to get the Cybercore. Of course, that is the high value target. And we see just one Zergling here hoping that maybe the Zealot is on, is not on hold position. And so the Zerglings, they're doing what they can to say, hey, you know what? Uh, we're going to try to draw you off, which means we maybe get in. And now the two the two Zealots are going to go out. And yes, there is kind of a surround here, but uh, the Zealots, they will get themselves in a really nice position. And a nice micro there from Vanya. Nice micro from Vanya. Actually, no, really nice micro from, there from Vanya. All the Zealots are going to go down, and suddenly this Cybercore is in big, big trouble. So that means the Cybercore is going to... The Cybercore goes down. That means Warp Gate's down. Yes, there's one Adept left. But now the Zerglings, they can get in. This is so much damage here from Vanya. And yes, Zerglings are not going to kill... They're not going to kill Astray here. But Warp Gate is getting delayed by like a solid minute and a half. Because you have to rebuild the Cybercore again. Uh, you have to start it up again. And it was about a third of the way done by the, by the time it died. This is a massive thing. This is a massive deal here for Vanya in game number one. Now, that's not to say Astrea is dead. He's not. It just, And it's not to say he's a da he's behind in any... Okay, a couple of Zerglings will get in and get a scout. and Or just start shelling away at this pylon as uh, the Adepts, uh, two Adepts that were forced out, they're going to go on into the main base, but there are plenty of Zerglings here, and the Queens are, are making them go away. But now the Zerglings, they're in the main base, and they're going to get a good scout, and they have forced a recall. And man, Astrea is back against the ropes here in this game. Number one, he knocked a little senseless. He's just, you, you can tell, he's just not comfortable in this game. And I mean, why would he? He, he lost his Cybercore. His warp gate is so is incredibly slow. His natural is delayed. He had to, he had to build two Zealous that he lost. He had to build two Adepts on top of that. He's just not happy. Granted, Vanya is only just now getting his third base. At a 43 supply, but only 28 workers. Um, which is fine. I mean, that, that's kind of the standard worker count, but uh, generally you're going to do that at 20 to 32 supply, not at 40, not at three minutes, not at almost four minutes into the game. But there's a bug that keeps flying in. Um, but that being said, it's it's pretty okay. I mean, Astrea's natural only just now completed. Vanya is, did get a little supply blocked on his follow-up scout, but the question is, what are we going to see here from Astrea? We do have a Robo on the way, but... Again, any sort of timing, it is massively delayed by the fact that the warp gate is delayed. It looks low. It looks like we're going to see some sort of pressure coming in from our red Protoss player. As I said, the, the probe is on, on position to get a third base. And maybe the, all these sentries that are building up energy that I thought were to enable some sort of immortal push. Well, maybe they're not. Maybe they're to enable a third base because, man, this is an insanely fast third base. It's going up. Uh, no, it's a not insanely fast third base normally but in this in this scope of this game this is a this is a third gate that's going up before there is warp gate to defend it hey thanks for the follow matt in the crown i really appreciate it so now the, the uh while well, the scouts are here and i almost got to feel this it's not a third it's not a fake third i mean this is again real fast for how much the natural was delayed for how much the timings of australia were delayed but he's gonna be able to get it anyways he says okay look i know what you're doing you're not going for a two base all in i don't think you are at the very least uh, your speed is not even done yet. Uh, you took a third base. 
But that being said, there are a lot of roaches on the way and a lot of overlords on the way too. And speed, Zergling speed is done. So it looks like that is exactly what Vanya is going for here. He's going to take the path around to the left or not. He's going to go take advantage of the fact that Lightshade is a really short map. And he can absolutely uh, go and, uh, well, absolutely go in and really just try to knock this third base down. Warp Prism is, or Warp Gate is done. But there's just not a whole lot here. How many gates do we have? We have a grand total of two gates on the map. So with the massive amounts of Roach Ravager, uh, Roachling Ravager coming on in here, potentially he's going to be able to get just uh, get on top of this Immortal. If he gets on top of the Immortal, he just kind of wins. But now he's going to go on into the natural. He says, you know what? There are too many sentries here. That's not what I want to deal with. And now he's going to maybe get this around here. Zerglings get on top of just about everything. And yes, the, the force fields are fine. But now Zerglings are on top of everything. We should see some massive vials. Now... That being said, there is a shield battery of a church, but that will get targeted down too sweet, and it can only heal one unit at a time. It is, of course, choosing the Immortal, but the Immortal is going to get targeted down. The Zergling should be able to take this out. Meanwhile, the Roaches, the Ravagers, they're fighting on the other side. Now, there is another shield battery in the third base, but two of them have gone down, and now the Immortal on the other side. Now, this Immortal is going to go down, so there's only one Immortal left, and it will stand strong for the moment, but Vanya, he's standing here. Double the army supply. Um, double the army supply of his opponent. Sitting here, the third base under pressure. There are only two bases. Um, sorry about that. Uh, Slack is making notification. Now the immortal does go down here as well. There are no, there's no more shield battery energy left. And Vanya, he is just here. This third base will go down. The question is whether Vanya thinks he can do something off of two bases. I don't think he can. Looking, at, look at the supplies. 51 army supply to 17. Astray just trying to come up with a way uh, to make this happen. Uh, yeah, I need a. I need to mute Skype, or I need to mute Slack. I apologize for that, for all the notification sounds. And he's actually just gonna, okay, there we go. Uh, the Biles will take the third base down. And now with the Biles here, it means this, we should see the Cybercore go down, we should see one of the gates go down. How many gates do we have? He's gonna go down up to one gate. And now Zarkling is there looking for a way to get in, but this wall is now done. It is, it is down. And once, well, wall is down for the moment. But you know what, with three Immortals here, yeah, we do see Vanya. He has droned up a little, and we do now have a, uh, we have, well, we have a Spire on the way. And this composition is not built to deal with Spires. Now, Zerglings, they will flood in, get on top of the, all the Immortals. Once again, we should see Biles coming on top of everything. Yes, there's a shield battery there, but it only does so much. And two Immortals go down with one Bile and Astrea. He's going to have to talk out, tap out. Vanya is going to take game number one. Now, let us mute Slack. How do I even do that? Okay, I guess I should just mute the conversation. But no, no. That's what I do. I go to do not disturb. Make sure I don't miss that. All right, there we go. And now we're waiting here for game number two. It's going to be on submarine. Ooh, it's going to get spicy. And I have failed to drink. All right, game number two. Vanya with the 1-0 lead. It is Submarine. And uh, hopefully Astraea's going to figure out a way to come underwater. Or come out from underwater, because here we go. And spawning in the upper left, in the blue for B100 Esports. From Russia with love, it's Vanya. And in the bottom right, in the red, representing Alpha X. His upper bracket on the line, but not the tournament. It's a straight.
you know, I like to think I'm a pretty good caster. I understand the game. Uh, I play Zerg at a decently high level, so at least I understand that magic pretty well. Um, I'm at, I'm decent at talking. I, I I've told I have a vo I've been told I have a voice through radio, which probably is more of a comment on my face. But anyway, but man, sometimes introductions just don't make a whole lot of sense. That being said, Avania once again, he's going for a Zerg. Well, it looks like he's going to go for more something more like a Zergling printer build, like the Solar build, or like the build that we saw Silky do uh, a game ago. That's we're just getting all the cheek the cheeky cheesy builds in the well in the not even in this series in this entire uh, thing we're following. So I just got a whole lot of uh, notifications, but it's just hey people following me on Twitter, so that's fun. Um, but anyway, Astrea is aware of this. He says, "Okay, I I see the fact that you went uh, you went a pool really quickly. Now you got fast gas. See this natural. He should be aware." of why things are, why things are happening as they are so he already does have that wall off he says no 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 it's not what i want now the, the trick is of course is he is going to have to make sure that he doesn't die to the follow-up he needs to make sure that he is he is ready to make the wall he makes to make, needs to make sure that he's ready to scout what's happening and he did go for a double gate opener here and well this double gate opener with the cyber core i don't think this is the answer well i, I guess it kind of is uh, because this is, of course, going to be... Well, it's going to be a little bit more aggressive. Now, the Zealot's going to go look to the third base. Says, okay, there's no third base here. I know what's up. Uh, now, this means that maybe it's not the solar build. Well, okay, no, the solar build is off of two bases. But Vanya, he has the opportunity here. He knows he knows what Astraea has done. He knows what Astraea, Astraea has committed to. So he absolutely has an opportunity here to just hit the macro button hard. To go take the third base to go do all that, but I don't think he's going to. And now with the the, the, the Zealot and the couple of depths, I I worry that Astray is maybe going to be a little bit too aggressive. Yes, he does have recall. But it's not... Okay, so he will be able to get the, the creep chamber. That's annoying. But now the depths are going to go on into the main base. And he... Okay, there we go. It's not going to commit, but he will force the drones to pull for a second. And now speed is done, but these are just drones on the way. This is Astray pulling a, pulling a bait and swish. Yes, he does have a decent amount of Zerglings. Sitting here at, tw at nine total Zerglings on the map. It's more and more drones on the way. Third base on the way here as well. And he is just... Well, he's playing an excellent series this far. He has forced Astrea to really overcommit to something that he doesn't necessarily want to commit to. And in doing so, well, he's been able to just get himself in a pretty nice macro lead. Now, it is three minutes... About 3.30 into the game. Natural is done here. Astrea doesn't really have a lot of mining, but neither does Vanya for the moment. Third base is only just now on the way. But the big deal... Warp Gate, it's done in five seconds. Astrea absolutely has an opportunity here to maybe actually get something done where he was not able to in the previous game. Now, there is there is no Robo. So that that is going to be a thing. And yeah, it's just going to be a Glaives opener here from our red Protoss players. You should, we should see a uh, fourth gate coming down sooner rather than later. And believe it or not, we're just going to kind of to a normal game off of things. Now, again, I think this is probably good for Australia. Yes, his natural was significantly later than it would like to be, but the third base of Vanya is much later. And now we do. Now we are. We, now we have the adepts already moving across the map. Of course, the glaives is around 4:30, or the uh, adepts find their way across the map at 4:30. Glaives finished right around 4:40, um, or even 4:30 if you're chronoing. But again, this is a little bit different. Timings are off, but it's good enough. As now we do see a bunch of zerglings on the way and roaches. There is no spine here, so we don't see the DRG defense. It's only 38 workers. Generally, you go up to like 41. But uh, of course, that is the well. That's the sacrifice you have to make when you when you do the aggressive play when you get that things that early. Now it looks like a couple adepts actually find their way on into the natural, and this is just kind of how, always how it goes. You know, it's the big. It's not the big adept army that gets all the damage. It's the two that were sped off to the side that make things rather scary. Now we don't have a robo done. So yes, glaives uh, glaives are done here, but I guess you really don't need a robo when the map is this short. More and more Zerglings are on the way here. And behind this, Astraea going for a Stargate. So there are Glaive builds where you go uh, Stargate into Glaives. It, it's, it's something that that, uh, that stats did particularly. But it looks like what we're going to see here is the opposite. Oh, well, Vanya, you don't want to hit your own... You don't want to hit your own drones. But anyway, this is going to be the opposite. We do have double Stargate on here, so we're going to see a lot of Phoenixes coming uh, coming the way to the other cross the side of the map. But now, it looks like... okay. Just barely the Zerglings are going to get there get there in time. And this is the, the... I don't know who first started doing this. But we, we started to see this several months after the DRG events first became big. Where the hold is not... You, you get a spine and whatever. No, it's... You get a bunch of Zerglings. 
you get three or four Ravagers. And you just, every time the Adepts commit, you just surround them with the Lings and bile them all down. But now we have, is this three guys Stargate? Okay, no, it's two Stargate. Oh, the second one's completing. Uh, two Stargate, two Stargate Phoenix as a result, or out of the, the, the Glaive Adepts here. And again, we just see these two Adepts that are going to get shaded in. Uh, and it's always the two that, that get the damage. So nice micro there from Vanya. Really not going to, he's going to lose, what, two workers? Um, he's going to lose three workers. That's actually pretty good. Two, uh, two or three workers for two Adepts. Yeah, if we look at the resources lost, absolutely good here for Vanya. And behind this, I mean, Astraea doesn't have a third base yet. This is, yes, it is to uh, two Stargate Phoenix, but I mean, behind this, I can't help but feel that he's going a little bit all in here. We, he still does need a third base. And Vanya is aware of the fact that he doesn't have a third base, so he knows, look, I need to do something. And uh, now, once again, these just, the two Adepts will go in. They will continue to pair off workers. Three workers do go down this time, and this is just damage by drips and drabs. Vanya not really, has not really been allowed to establish the type of economy that he would like. Now, I do b believe Vanya, is he aware of the Stargates? No, but he does have a Hydra Den coming down anyways. I guess maybe he's just aware of how Astraea plays. Because, I mean, if if, it's, if your opponent's just going Mass Adept, you actually don't want a Hydra Den. The Adepts just get on top of the Hydras and kill them all off. Um, but that's not what we're going to see here. Ivania, he's stuck on 45. And only just now is he going in once again. And we're going to... And just the, this Phoenix count, or the... the uh, I should... Sorry, the Adept count. Not increasing all that much, but now the Phoenix... They're going to do what they can. I think that what we're going to see is they're just going to go and do what they can to lift up all of the all of the, the Ravagers. But now these Biles are just going to explode. So many of these Adepts. But despite that, they're going to, the Adepts are going to get on into the third base here. Nice pull there at the last minute, the last second even, from these drones. Now the Adepts are going to go on into the natural. Now things are starting to snowball a little. As all the Zerglings are dead, and now the Adepts, they find their way on into the natural. But the, uh, the Ravagers, they're going to do a good job. And more and more Zerglings on the way. So they're going to try to trap on the ramp. And they won't get anything. And now the Phoenix, they are on top of these, on top of the Overlords. If they can get any and all of these Overlords, that's where things get a little bit big. They get a little bit scary. Is of course, well, if you can't build anything, you can't build anything, you get supply blocked. That's where it starts to not feel very good. But now the Adepts, they're just continuing to rally across the map here. And now we do have lift-ups on all the Queens. And they're starting to go down. The Phoenix, they are dominant. There's just not enough anti-air. But on the flip side, Adepts are going down. There's not a whole lot here on the ground for, for Astraea to deal with. And the and the uh, the Phoenix, they're kind of running out of energy. And now with the Hydra is on the way, it feels Vanya by the skin of his teeth feels like he's barely held. But actually, no, Happy uh, <laughs> let, let me amend that. And the, the Biles are going to go down nicely, but all the Queens are going to go down here. They overextended. Uh, they overextended outside of the spores, and there's just not enough spores. I mean, there are two per base. Yeah, sure, that's nice. But uh, you need spores in position to actually defend your army. And that's not the situation here whatsoever. We should see, well, the Phoenix, they are dominant. Unfortunately, Phoenix, they don't kill buildings. There are only two Hydras. Actually, they got to make sure the Hydras are going to get picked up anyways. But now we're going to start to see some Phoenix get traded off. But we just see, we need to see a lot more spores than we do or something. These Hydras, they need to be rallied to the, uh, we can see them here. They need to be rallied to the spores, not to the main army. Yeah, there we go. Astraea, when you rule the skies like this, it does not feel good for the Zerg player whatsoever. He needs to just be continuously producing queens, continuously producing hydras, and really what he needs, honestly, just a smack, just a bunch more, uh, a bunch more spores to be able to secure this position that he has for himself. But that being said, I mean, yes, this is not great. The, but eventually, these the uh, the Phoenix will run out of energy. And I, you know what? I honestly would not mind seeing just like four spores per base. As well, Astraea has his opponent in a chokehold. And now, while well, Vanya's gonna move across the map, do what he can to maybe. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Put some pressure on. But of course, the all the adepts have to do, they you know, shade back across the map once again to say, hey, we're gonna kill your mineral line. Stay back. And then we'll stay back. Now, there are not enough hydras yet to take this fight. Especially not with plus one just about done. Now, of course, the, the Phoenix they're gonna jump on top of this once again. Now we're starting to see some Phoenix traded up, but I mean how many? Four Phoenix have died this game. Versus how how much of the anti-air? This is just not not a fair trade. And once again, the adepts they're going to go in. Phoenix they're just going to lift everything. And yes, the 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 roaches, the lings, they're going to try to maybe get on top of these adepts. But the the, the whole point of this, uh, what the Phoenix are doing, what the adepts are going to start trying to do, is you want to pair away at the hydra count. You want to make sure like you want to pair away at the queen count. Want to pair away at the hydra count. Make it so it is impossible for Vanya to truly get an anti-air force that you want. And then once again, the hydra the hydra or the wow the Phoenix are going to jump on top of all the queens on top of all the hydras. And yes, one Phoenix did die. 
And what I will say is, maybe there's an opening. How many? We don't have a lot of abducts. But we have enough. So we have the roaches, a uh, bunch of roachling moving across the map, trying to knock out the third base, but I don't think this is going to work. Sure, Astoria has a lot of his army supply tied up in the sky, but he's going to be able to remove all reinforcements. And this is just a lot of adepts against a lot of zerglings. And yes, there are roaches here, but it doesn't even matter. I mean, the, Zer the zerglings will be able to get on into the main base, but this the rest of this army is dead, or at least as many as many lifts as there are possible. And yes, there are zerglings into the main base. They're trying to do what they can, but all you got to do is warp in a couple of adepts, and that will not work whatsoever. So now the Hydras, the Roaches are here. Vanya making a last-ditch Valiant effort. But some things are just not meant to be. And GG Estrella is going to take game number two. And with that, we're moving to game three. All right, so let's take a look at the bracket. Mana versus Skillis did 2-0, sort of. Um, Neeb versus Namshar. It's happening. Uh, Namshar 2-1 Hellraiser. Nice nice result for him. Um, Kelliger did 2-0. Peely, 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 Peely. Nice is waiting for the winner of B practice. Is that mech? It's got to be mech. Uh, because we, we still have a first-run matchup going on. Cham 2-0 future. So Cham versus uh, U-Thermal coming up. Um... Gung Fu Bando versus Bly is still going on. Winner plays Petit Drogo and Scarlet versus Soul. That's got to be a good matchup. I, I believe that's happening right now. All right. It's one to one. It's the rubber match. Winner plays winner plays max packs. Loser goes to the losers bracket. Let's go. And here we are, spawning the upper left. In the blue, he's the Russian. He's Vanya. And in the bottom right, in the red, representing Alpha X, it's a strand. All right, but we have a... Okay, Vanya, he's going to be a little bit cheeky in this game. Number three is that we do see... Well, the, the drone is on a, on a path. A de path of destiny. But more importantly, it's a path to avoid the probe scout that we're going to see coming out from Australia to make sure that, oh, I'm not being cheesed, right? Yeah, no, it's natural at the given time. Absolutely, we are totally happy with this. No, that's that's not exactly what's happening here. It's not we do have this drone of Vanya. It's going to sneak its way on into the natural of our red Protoss player is going to drop a hatchery. He says, no, 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 no. You do not get your natural. You don't get your natural at any time that I would like. And of course, we're going to see this happen. Uh, the question is whether Australia is going to pull probes or whether he's just going to chrono out that zealot. The zealot's going to get chronoed out. And it should be early enough to prevent prevent the, uh, well, I should say prevent Vanya from holding that, keeping the hatchery. Although I do see him just keep the hatchery anyway sometimes. And just the eggs and the larvae do a good job of delaying the hatchery that much longer. You get, you get a couple Zerglings out. If you're really lucky, you can get a Queen out, get some Creep Tumor, creep tumors down. But now we do have the, what, the one Zealot, one Probe here. And this, of course, is the less committed uh, hatch block. There is one where you get your natural in, in the Protoss third base, and that requires a Probe pull. But this one, no. This one, you just kind of want to make sure it doesn't get up. It doesn't get the Creep down. Now with the second Zealot here. Um... Va Vanya, I don't think he cancels. I do believe he, I believe he has enough HP to get this up all the way. Uh, but he may he may cancel into an Evo block. I see him do that too. Um, so we're just gonna have to take an, keep a look out for that. If he wants, he can absolutely complete this. Let the creep go out. But anyway, we're gonna see. Now there's L L there we go. So there we have the Evo block as well, and that's just annoying. And the drone's gonna stay alive, which means. Well, it's going to get a scout in the main base. There is always the opportunity, actually. <laughs> I've seen Vanya do this before. He's just going to go send the drone around. Oh, look, I'm scouting. And then he drops the hatchery, like, right here. 
which looks like he maybe. Yep, there we go. <laughs> We're going to see the Proxiatry in the main base this time. But of course, he does have to make sure he has enough Zerglings to defend the two Zealot, uh, the two Adept Zealot pressure coming on in. The question is whether Astria noticed. Okay, yeah, he, he's aware of this. So you notice the fact that the, that the uh, that he, he remembered that he remembered the drone. So the drone will go down. Yeah, trying to block that gas, but will not happen. Now on the flip side, though, the, the zerglings and well, the zerglings were were trying to surround that. They will not. They were not able to do so. Nice micro there from Australia, getting a positive trade. Now with the Stargate on the way. Hey, response. Thank you so much for the follow. I appreciate you. So so much more so than you can ever know. It's nice to be back on my own channel. I have not been. I have not cast on this channel for a while now actually um i've missed the last couple exxon cups because of because of work although i did do the last i, I did do the finals uh with, with steadfast but anyway um now we have this interesting pressure here uh max bat or van Vanya's gonna do what he can to make sure that he, he can uh force this back now the depths they will not go in there enough circling there and speed is done as well question though is what is Australia going for what does he want to do now we do have uh one one board is going to get chronoed out but we're at about four minutes, and there's no gas on the natural. That being said, a lot of these, when you look at time, it's like, oh, you, it's, if it's four minutes, you say, okay, well, you know, my opponent um, is going to go, my, my, the Protoss player wants to go all in. There's no gas in the bait uh, on the, there's no gas in the natural by three minutes and 30. But you got to remember, he was hatch block. Timing is, timings are always going to be a little bit off. Um, and yeah, it looks like he will take that third base. Now, he, he does have an Oracle. He has a Void Ray for the defense, for the offense. He's going to do what he can. Really, th this Oracle is just an overloading du duty. Uh, it's not a pulled Viking. Because, well, Protoss don't really have Vikings, but it, it, fulfilling a similar task, just do, doing what it can to prevent Vanya from getting any sort of scouting, uh, and ideally even supply blocking him if he can. But, of course, the minute you uh, the Zerg feels their overlords are under threat, they just start building more. So that's not going to happen here. Vanya sitting here on a fairly nice uh, supply, supply, uh, supply gap. Um, getting up, getting his economy ASAP. And now we're going to have the, uh, the Voider's going to try to snipe the spawning, but we'll not be able to do so, though. With the Queen, with the support, we'll be forced back. But maybe this is something that that Astria can go back into later in the game. Because now these uh, adepts will not complete. And that is a really nice stasis warp. On the left-hand side, got pretty much this entire mineral line. All, all but about three workers. So if we look at the economy here, Yoink, back in Astraea's favor. Absolutely. So these Zerglings will... They're aware of these depths, but that's not a fight. They, they can take, and Astraea, his third base is just about done. It looks like, though, Vanya, he has a Hydra Den, he, Hydra Den done. Hydra Range is on the way. And I would not be surprised to see Vanya go for a rather... Well, go for a rather quick uh, Hydra push. Hydra, Hydra Link push. We do see him do that on occasion. Hey, look, look at Masian. Thank you so much for the follow Welcome, welcome, welcome. Hope you're having a great night. Hopefully, hopefully this is making your night, your night even better than it already was. So question here, Vanya. We have uh, Groove Spines halfway done. Hydro Range is about halfway done. And these Zerglings really should really not be able to get anything in. That's a nice wall. They will be able to maybe deny some of these gateways. And there we go. They will force a, force a cancel on one of them. Sure, I should really re rebuild that sooner rather than later. Um, I know the Void Rate, well... Once again, it's going to try to target the spawning pool down. And now with the queen here with the spore, yeah, it's not really going to accomplish what he wants. But this is, of course, APM sinks. Um, I would have liked to see these adepts going on into the third base synced up properly. But uh, even that, now the adepts do get on into, the, into this third. And they're just going to start targeting workers down. Of course, only two of them need, need to be alive to start killing workers. So they're doing a good job. Their queen will target one down. But now the adepts, they're in a good spot. Five workers have gone down. And there's a recall. They will just get out. Astraea is in a pretty good spot this game. As it looks like he wants to go to into Blink Stalker Colossus as his composition of choice. But now Hydra's Zerglings, they are streaming across the map. This is the timing that Vanya has been looking for. As he doubles his opponent's army supply. And there he does not have uh, Gleal Augmentation. or uh, He does not have Hydra Speed. It's just range. Now the Zerglings are going to do what they can to get on top of this entire army. Nice force fields, but the shrouds are there anyways. And of course with Hydra range, they shoot over force fields. So this entire army will get evaporated just before the shield battery is complete. So the Zerglings there on top of everything. Shield batteries are going to get targeted down with extreme prejudice. 
And now more and more workers are going to start to see go down here. Hydra's shelling away at everything. Hydra's new, new need to be brought to the front, and we do need to see more Zerglings on in. But Hydra's Zerglings, they are streaming in, and we're going to see these pylons get targeted down, which of course means the shield battery. Actually, it is powered for the moment. Void Ray is here on the defense, but Void Ray is just going to get targeted down, and this third base is under fire. It is, uh, it is dealing with extreme difficulty as the Hydra's going to go on in. But, I mean, the, the Starks are actually trading pretty well, and that plus one is done. Uh, blink done in just about a second, too. So these Hydras, they are running... They're, they're, <laughs> Avani is running out of Hydras in the natural, or in, in the third base, but the natural, now we have it clumping up once again. 21 workers have gone down, and look at the army supply. 74 to, to 19. And yes, these Stalkers, they did had a, made a good accounting of themselves. And with the Colossus here, I mean, the Colossus does damage. It's really good against light units, um, but the, I'm just looking at the supply. 68 to 25, and actually with the Stalkers, they will be able to trade things off. Plus one, this is a plus one Protoss army against the plus one Zerg army, and now we do have Hydra Speed on the way. I don't think that Vanya's going to be able to get too much more done, although he absolutely, well, if Astraea steps out like this, he has such an opportunity for a full storm. The Stalkers are going to bling on top of things, and now it's Astraea's turn to get aggressive. He will be able to get a, will be able to get a Overlord as well, but he doesn't have a third base. He has been forced into a truly all-in position here. And now the Stalkers, they can, of course, chase down a good bit of this army. And if he's able to get enough, if he's able to kill enough of these Hydras, maybe there's an opportunity where he goes and counterattacks. Because really, this is not an army that can fight piecemeal. There is no, there is no, bu there is no buffer here. There is no bulk here. This Colossus by itself does so much damage to everything. And we notice the supply; it's no longer four times the size that Vanya had. Now it's now it's double. And as the trades continue to happen, it's looking better and better for Astraea here. And Vanya, sure, he's got a lot of Hydras. But he needs to make. But he needs to be able to make sure he can get something with him. But now Hydra's speed is done. Now we do have the stutter step forward, and he's going to start targeting the Colossus down. Going down, the shields are just about done here. But now, for the moment, he does not have high ground vision. Colossus just barely go, just barely going to survive. And the Starkers are going to be forced to blink backwards as well. But once they blink backwards, they lose out on some of their maneuverability. And now the Hydras, they are here. They are aggressive. They're on top of the third base once again. And Vanya. Well, it looks like Astraea overcommitted on the aggressive just a little bit much, but what could he have done? What else could he have done here? And now the, the Hydras, they're going to step forward once again. Nice force fields will shave everything off, but the Colossus, it has so little health, but it looks like it will have enough to hold, and the army supplies are equal. Banya, he it does not have enough here. Astraea, he's holding just barely on one Colossus, a hope, a couple stalkers, and a prayer. He has his third base. It's just about halfway done. He's only down nine workers, or 11 workers. And maybe there's something he can do now. Plus one is done. Now he has two Colossus on the way. Extended Thermal Lance on the way. And Vanya, he's going to have to take a step back. Hive is halfway done. Hive is halfway done. And that is what Vanya needs to make sure that he can take the take the fight. Right now, Hydraling, it does not win against, uh, against any sort of Colossus count. But if you add some Vipers... If you add some Vipers, that is absolutely what works out well for you here. As he's starting to add Roaches, he needs that buffer. He needs that... Well, he just needs that beef to make sure his Hydras don't immediately die. Those ro roaches to just get on top of the Colossus. Surround them, flank them, get on top of them, kill them off. As we do see Galil Restitution re uh, Reconstruction on the way. Roach Speed on the way to make sure that Vanya can actually take the fight that he wants. And this army, it looks so small, but it's so mighty. But unfortunately, there's a Zer there's a massive Zergling counterattack in the main and in the natural. Five workers have gone down. These are five workers that Astraea cannot afford to spare as more and more do go down. And a couple Zerglings on top of the forge as well. I would actually like to see him get on top of the forge even more, but no, it is the drones that are the prize. Twelve workers do go down and more and more going down here. And yes, there are some sentries, but sentries do not kill Zerglings all that rapidly. And the Zerglings, they've done so much. Fifteen workers have gone down. Astraea, this chance for an economic lead, for an economic advantage, or at least an economic equality is down the drain. 15 workers have died. And now Vanya doubling the army supply of Vanya. Or of Astraea. Roach speed is done. Plus one, uh, plus one range is just about done. And we have a hive done. We should see Vipers coming out here sooner rather than, rather than later. I mean, that's not to say Astraea is out of this. Right, there are moves he can make. I do like the War Prism speed. Disruptors, of course, are the best comeback unit in the game. But Disruptors, they don't matter a ton when Vipers are out. As we do see the War Prism here. And we see a Colossus drop on the way. That's interesting. Now we have the three Vipers out. And now... Now is the time... For Vanya to hit that timing that he is so excited about. As he's sitting about 170, 175 supply, three Vipers, uh, enough energy for six Abducts, and they're just, well, there are two Colossi. 
And one is, of course, drop going to the other side of the map. And, uh, well, the Observer has found that. And that's going to be an immediate recall. But now the Stalkers or the Vipers, they're going to move forward. And the Stalkers, they need to be really on top of things. They need to be able to make sure that they can blink out, kill out everything. They're going to get one of them immediately. And they're going to get a second. There's only one Viper left. He only needs two abducts. But he needs to make sure he doesn't lose this Viper. The force fields were tremendous. Great job there from Astrea. Staying alive. But, of course, the longer this game lasts... It's not just about staying alive here. It's about the next fight and the fight after that. The Lurker Den is on the way. Two more Vipers on the way. Vanya, he's resetting for a second push. And again, he's up double the supply of Estrella. He's down in economy. He's down He's down in army. It's it's not a good situation, but I mean, with Storm's here, we, we, we have a couple High Templar for feedback at the moment. And Storm is about halfway done. And Storm is, uh, Storm is a good unit. So do the Zerg players and the Terran players. So do they tell me. But now we have a, what is this, a fifth base coming up here from Vanya as he continues to grow. And a bunch of, well, there's a bunch, a bunch of lurkers on the way. And interestingly enough, this is one of those rare occasions where the Zerg is going uh, Hydro Lurker Viper. And he is short gas. He's not short, he's not short minerals. He's short gas trying to build everything. So that, again, that's not something you see all that often, but it is what we see here. This time we have a lurker range just about halfway done. Uh, what is, it's called something. It's lurker range. That's, that's all that matters. And I worry that Vanya maybe is not taking advantage of, of this advantage that he does have for himself. I mean, yes. Getting an extra base, it's nice. Went ahead, get more ahead. Absolutely. But his army is so much better. And he's so much more of it. That there is absolutely an opportunity for him to maybe bulldoze down. But I get he's I get what he's afraid of. He says, look, I don't want to lose this game to being too aggressive. I'm in a good position. I should absolutely take advantage of that and I just I'm gonna get a fifth base I'm gonna get lurkers I'm gonna get uh, lurker upgrades I'm going to get uh, my attack upgrades and it's gonna be pretty nice He's, he does of course have vipers as well but this is giving Astrea time D, uh, Dark Shrine is done blink DTs are on the way I see a bunch of DTs getting warped in on the bottom side that's a lot of what, five total DTs uh, th that's more than just a harassing force that's a base killing force or at least an attempted one and the first storm is just going to be incredible force it Vanya taking the uh, damage in a ch in a choke but of course sure really can't attack another there are too many lurkers here and oh actually nice link there we'll be able to get one lurk one lurker and the storms are going to get more and more and more the now we have a straight trading so well against the army of Vanya but now we have a bunch of roaches a bunch of ravagers that Vanya doesn't really need anymore will be on the counterattack on the right hand side as Vanya, he just turtles up. Uh, the question is, where does he go from here? What is his tech path of choice? Well, it looks like for the moment, the tech path is a whole lot more lurkers. Now the roaches, the the one Ravager, they will get on top of the these uh, the static defense. And we see a bunch of warp ends here. But this is our, this is more than just a couple stalkers can take care of us. We have the stalkers, or we have the roaches, they're attacking the natural into the third base. Meanwhile, Vanya, with all these lurkers, is attacking into the fourth base. And now the lurkers have quick burrow. And yeah, the storm's nice. But, uh... Storm only does so much. And now, okay, the Hydra's going to get on top of all these High Templar. Only one remaining. And it's just going to evaporate, which means this fourth base is dead. It is gone. But on the flip side, this is a lot of, a lot, a lot of Dark Templar. The third base is going to die as well. Roach Warren under threat. So this is, uh, we're getting a little base trade here. That's always scary, always terrifying. We don't have any, there are no lurkers on the defensive. Bunch of Hydras. But um, this is the point where, okay, uh, DT Blink is done and uh, DTs will, will be forced to Blink out. So this is actually turning into a pretty solid trade for Vanya here. So this queen will go down. And Astrea, he's been forced into a base trade. Two lurkers are going to sit here on top of the third base to deny any sort of mining, any sort of base eventually. And yes, Vanya will lose the fourth base. But he's still going to be on three hatcheries behind this. And behind this, well, this massive lurker army will find its way on behind. As a couple hydras are taking the fight a little bit too early. And we have the star step forward. The Colossus is going to get targeted down. One does die. And we see the recall on top of a couple more hydra. On a top of a couple more lurkers. Astrea uh, expanding twice on the right-hand side. Okay, these DTs are a thorn. Okay, but now, now with the detection here, will be a okay. And now, the, of course, the big story is the army of Vanya sitting here. It is dominant. There is just one Colossus left on the map. And sure, the Vipers don't have energy. Great feedbacks. Absolutely. But it doesn't matter when it's 109 army supply to 18. And now Vanya, he's running in with all so many lurkers and there we have it gg vanya he's gonna take it he's gonna play